Do you sometimes feel like the little old lady that lived in the shoe? Your kids are moving back from college or your parents are moving in? Perhaps you're ready to start a home-based business. Well, today on For Your Home, we're going to put the finishing touches on our garage attic makeover. You're going to love the way this project turns out. On the last episode of For Your Home, we started converting the attic over my three-car garage into a usable space that could be an apartment, a home office, or both. Today, we'll start to bring it all together, complete with beautiful furnishings. But first, let's take a look at some of the work that our FYH team has already completed. Wow, wouldn't it be great if construction projects really happened that fast? Only on TV, darling. This project had a major impact on my garage. The entire ceiling had to be removed to provide access for the plumber, electrician, carpenters, and the insulation. The attic had already been insulated with spray foam, and we wanted to use the same materials under the floor to help regulate the year-round temperature of the attic space. This is the only way to ensure that the insulation won't settle down over time and create an air space that will trap hot air in the summer and cold air in the winter. This also allows our new heating and cooling equipment to operate more efficiently. This is Matt Boeing with Airtron. He installed our new heating and cooling system. Take a look. Well, you took up all the space that I thought I was going to have for storage over here. You know, I sure did, Vicki. It, it was a really limited space we had to work with, and uh -huh. um, sometimes you really have to cram it in there to make it work right. But but uh, I think that uh, we're, we're going to have some, uh, you know, good luck with this system. All right, now what size of uh, unit did you put in here? This is a one and a half ton heat pump, and. Um, we sized that based off of a, a, what's called a right J load calculation. And what is that? Um, well, it takes the, the spray foam insulation into account, the windows, doors, floor, and ceiling loss. Okay. And we even use our climate da data here for North Carolina. And we enter those items, and it uh, basically shoots out a, a five-page report that tells us how much air we need in each room and what okay. size equipment. So to you put have in. your master plan to start off with in that. Exactly. Yeah. Now you said heat pump, and if you're not from the south, that's a term you're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. How does a heat pump work? Well, a heat pump is basically the same thing as an air conditioner, but it's got what's called a reversing valve on it to to pull heat out of the outdoor air. And um, even in the, in the winter, there's heat in the air. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's pull, pulling heat out of the outdoor air, and it's very efficient down to temperatures in the, you know, 30 degree range. Uh -huh. And when it gets much below that, it, it, they can be a little more costly to run, but that, that's what makes it such a, a great system in the southern market. Insulation and a great new efficient heating and cooling system really made a big difference in this space. But our energy saving efforts didn't stop there. When you're remodeling a space over the top of the garage, keeping it warm in the winter and cool in the summer can be quite the challenge. Installing energy efficient doors and windows, well, that's part of the solution. Now, in this space, we had some challenges. First of all, this is an addition. We wanted to make sure that our windows tied in with the windows that were in the original house. So we selected windows that have mullions in them. Now, these are double pane glass and we have between the glass the mullions. We could remove them if we wanted to at a later date. But we also have between the glass many blinds. That means that those blinds are not going to collect any dust or dirt. I'm not going to have to be cleaning them. They're also not going to collect any allergens that are going to make the air more toxic in the house. And, you know, if you've got pet, pets at your house, like cats or dogs, you don't have to worry about them playing with the blinds. Now, these are movable. I can open them up. I can close them down so I can control the light that's coming into the space. 
And if I decide later on, now I selected white ones, of course, but if I decide later on that I want to change the color, I can take these blinds out, leave them out completely if I want to, or I could select another color, and there's a big variety, and install those in these windows to totally change the look. And you know how I'm always loving to redecorate. There's also pleated shades that you can get to go in these windows as well with a lot of variety in those colors. So there's real good energy efficient stories going on here with our windows and our doors. And I have a great designer touch that this added to the project. Now, I didn't stop with just the windows. The door coming into our new project we also went for the same kind of options there. It's a wood door, just like these are wood windows. It has the blinds between the glass. So when everybody comes in and out and opens and closes that door, I'm not gonna hear the bang, bang, bang of mini blinds. You know how really frustrating that can be. We also added another feature in here, and that is skylights. We have three big, beautiful, well-insulated glass skylights that we included in this project. And the beauty about skylights is, of course, naturally the light, but it also, as a designer, it opens up this space. You don't feel so closed in. So don't forget to look at the advantages of incorporating good quality selections when you're planning your project with both your doors, your windows, and if possible, skylights. I absolutely love the floors. They turned out great. Mm -hmm. This is Dan, and he's with Accent Wood Flooring, and you guys really put the perfect accent on this project with these floors. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. I love it. It's a great product. Uh, the maple product has a lot of variance in color. Uh, it is a pre-finished product, so it is definitely a much easier installation, and you don't have to go through the sanding and finishing process and all the smell and the dust associated with that type of installation. And I like the fact too that it's much faster because you know typically when years ago when we would install hardwood flooring, you would have to schedule like a you know a week for them to come in and sand exactly. and varnish and go through that whole process. And now it's just standing by the end of the day. I mean we were walking on it that's you know right. the very same day, and that's the great about pre-finish. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the finish that's on here. How durable is that going to be? This is an aluminum oxide coating. It has a 100-year wear warranty. An aluminum oxide pre-finished hardwood floors, basically, it is already pre-finished from the factory. Uh -huh. It is very dent and abrasive resistant, and it'll hold up in high wear areas. Which is great, because this is going to be a path exactly. that's going to go right through here. Well, you know, when you say 100 years, I'd like to think I was going to be around 100 <laughs> years. So, you know, does that mean I can transfer that? Or exactly. That work? Exactly. You register the floor with the manufacturer, and that, and if you sell the home, that warranty is transferable to the new homeowners. So that's a really nice feature when exactly. you're selling your home to have that and to know. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that I know that it's going to stand up to all the traffic that it's going to get in this space. That's right. And that it's going to look as beautiful as it does now. Because, you know, as a designer, I'm always looking for a product that is going to provide for me not only a good, durable finish, mm -hmm. but one that is also going to be easy to work with. Mm -hmm. You know, the color of our cabinets, it was easy for Jim and the guys to match because we had a lot of variation. So oh, this yeah. was this was one of their stock colors. They mm -hmm. didn't have to go to extra effort to make it match because yeah. we had that variation. And with this type of floor, you have a lot of color variations too. So a lot of your decor, you know, has a, uh, can pick up a lot of the tones and the exactly. natural tones of the wood. Exactly, you can get the, the light wood. and dark of it, exactly. and I like it. And we've used like three different rugs in this area, mm -hmm. and all three of the rugs, different colors, different styles, and they still go with the, the floors That's in all exactly different right. rooms to it. It turned out well. Well, Dan, when you guys got in here, they were really professional. They did a great job mm -hmm. for us, and the end results really show it. So thank you so much for helping us with this project. Oh, I've enjoyed it. Gave us just the right footing that we needed for it. That's thank for sure. you. Thank you. I think it turned out great. A kitchen and bathroom are essential elements to the home, but when the space is small, you have to be creative. Well, this is our new bathroom, and it turned out beautiful. It's a small space, but it has some of the state-of-the-art fixtures and features in it that really pull it all together. First of all, we went with a wall-mounted toilet unit, and our water tank is actually hidden behind the wall, so that gave us an extra eight or nine inches. Our vanity and vessel sink, they're wall mounted, so it kept the floor wide open and makes it more airy. I love the deep bowl and the beautiful faucet. In the shower, we went with a very popular rain head setup, and we have very few hardware items in, in our shower area, again, keeping it nice and sleek and clean. 
but one of my favorite things about this bathroom has got to be the beautiful blue tiles. This is Jennifer and she's from Tile Collection. And Jennifer worked with me on this project, both in the bathroom and in the kitchen tile, mm -hmm. on the design, and your craftsman did a wonderful job. Well, they're definitely skilled, and that's exactly what you need with this type of material. Any type of glass mesh mosaic is going to be heavy. You're uh -huh. going to need the right setting materials, the right men to do the job, because at the end of the day, it's definitely pricey per square foot, but it speaks for itself. It's and gorgeous. And it just needs to be perfectly straight, because you could really tell if it's not, and this is a beautiful job. And the floor, you know, we were something pretty classic. On right. The floor. Yeah, just a white on white pinwheel. But the best thing about this floor, Vicki, I think we both agree, is the radiant heat that's put underneath. So on a cold winter day, your your floor is already warm uh -huh. when you come in. And I love that feature because it makes it nice and toasty when you've got an open, unheated space below like we do with the garage. Exactly. I couldn't have been happier. Both the kitchen and the bathroom turned out beautiful. Thank you so much for your help. Oh, thank you for having us. A space like this has to perform a lot of functions, and one of those is it has to have a kitchen. We ended up with this beautiful, long granite countertop here. I selected for our sink area a sink that is stainless steel. It's an oversized bar sink, has a beautiful contemporary shape to it. It'll give us plenty of room for cleanup work. The faucet has a pull-out sprayer head, making it even more convenient. Now, for a standard kitchen, you can use a standard refrigerator, but not for us. For this one, I selected one of the new under-counter refrigeration units. This one is a double door. It holds 7.6 cubic feet of produce and uh, beverages in here. Very easy. On the sides, it's got nice LED lights, so that's a nice energy saver. Pull-out bins. And in this one, you can even fit two one-gallon containers in the bottom and have some space left over. So you can see, you can really get a lot of storage in these units. Right on the top of it, you can set five different settings. So whatever you want to store in your refrigerator, you're going to find exactly the right temperature. Now, a microwave is a perfect choice for a small kitchen. This one is a microwave drawer with a push of the button. It opens up, easy for you to load your food in. Then just push the button and it closes automatically. It's a nice safety feature too if you're opening it to stir halfway through the process. Don't forget to add a gourmet coffee maker to your kitchen if you're a coffee lover like myself. The counter we have added across the top a nice shelf. It was Jim's idea and I absolutely love it. It helped us hide our over-the-counter lighting. The beautiful natural maple that's on the shelf and on the cabinets ties in beautifully with our hardwood floors. The nice brushed aluminum handles tie it all together. So when you are planning a kitchen, think about both form and function. The cabinets were created by Jim Mock's team at Marsh Furniture. We met weeks ago and made our selections. Take a look. Well, Jim, now that you know the appliances I've selected for this project, you've really got the design coming together. Walk me through it. Well, starting over here on the right-hand side, uh -huh. we, uh, we have a wall vent heating and air uh, on that wall right there. So we decided to leave this open and do like a knee space right there. And I like it. We can put a little stool there or a trash can. That'll exactly, look really nice. Exactly. And then we have a sink to the, to the left of that. Uh -huh. And then we have a standard base cabinet with a functional drawer. And then we have your beverage fridge area right here. You know, and I'm really excited about this one that we selected because it has the French doors in it and a lot exactly. of storage space. We can get storage. beverages and, and food in there if we need to. Yes. And then we have a microwave over here to the left. Right and here. that's a microwave drawer, which mm -hmm. I love those. Now, can I have a drawer underneath here? That will be a functional drawer. Okay. Under there. Perfect. Well, I think that that's going to be a great layout. It's very simple, but that's what we needed here with lots of storage space in it. Now, I went over to your shop and I picked out the door style that I liked, and I love this is because it is such a clean line to it, and we're trying to stay as contemporary as we can up here. But this is too dark because this is the hardwood flooring that I dropped off to you uh, that we're going to be using. There's a variation of shading in this maple flooring. It's pre-finished. So you were going to come up with a color to match for me. And we did. And you got it? We got it. Okay. Uh, this right here we felt like was right in between these two colors. Oh, right here. nice so job. This is yeah. one of our standard colors. Yeah. A natural maple. Well, I love the fact that it's standard that makes it more exactly. affordable and delivery time is shorter, right? That is correct. Okay, is well, correct. this is going to blend really beautiful. I can't wait. And we're going to dress this up with some great hardware. 
Sounds and good. we get it put together. All Sounds right, so good. that solves a problem for mm -hmm. our kitchen area, and I know you're doing a great set of file drawers in one of the office yes. spaces that could also be used to store clothes in if they're going to use it as an apartment, right? Correct. We've got a little bit of issue, though, in here with code in the bathroom, so come on over here and let's look at the vanity. Let's take a look. Well, we're glad we have a bathroom up here, but we do have some issues. It's a really narrow bathroom. Jim, we got to make all of this work and make code. Now, to make it look more spacious, we're going to use a wall-mounted toilet over in this area, keep the floor open. This is where our sink and vanity is going to go. Our biggest issue here is not this, but it's this, yes. the depth of it, because we've got to be able to pass code and stand in front of it and really access it. So that's your exactly. problem to figure out as a cabinet man. Exactly. Well, I'm going to work with Chris to make okay. sure we keep this depth as limited as possible okay. with, and still fit the bowl okay. into the countertop. And also the, the faucet location will make a difference too on All where right. we put that instead of putting it right behind it. Okay. We might put it on the corner. Um, also, we're going to open up the bottom of the cabinet. We're going to have it wall mounted where there's about an 18 inch gap at the bottom to where you can walk by okay. very easily. Perfect, so it'll all be wide open, the tile can just flow like that. I love that idea. Are we gonna have any storage under there at all? No storage, it's just so tight with that bolt. Yeah. The sink and the plumbing are gonna take up the entire cabinet. Well, it is what it is, it's a garage apartment, so you know, it, it's gonna be great. I know you guys will do a perfect job. Thank you, you. Always do. we will, thanks. I called on Angie from Metro Stone to help me create the countertops that would be perfect for the kitchen. Angie, I am absolutely loving this granite and tile combination. I it's do beautiful. Too. I love it. I love it. You know, you guys always do a wonderful job for us Thank with the granite. You. And I couldn't, I just love the flow and the color. Vicki, don't forget, you've got a light color granite in here. You need to keep it sealed. How often? About once every year. And then it'll be just as beautiful as it was the day you guys That's installed right. it. That's right. Yeah. Well, this is our main living space, and I couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. It's very inviting and very comfortable. I had help from my friend, Norman Couture. He visited me during the construction process to help me make these furniture selections. Take a look. Norman, I'm so glad you could come up here and see the space because, you know, it's hard to kind of visualize what I was explaining to you over yes, the phone. Yes, yes, yes. So it was a good excuse to come and see me yeah. anyway. Okay, so... My pleasure. This area is going to be like the living room space, but because it's a multi-purpose space, we need to have some flexibility. So yes. put your great thinking cap on, and what do you think? Okay. Yeah. Well, the, the room being multi-purpose, I think the sofa, the, for all the furniture should be multi-purpose as well. Okay. And it happens that uh, I have some products, I believe, would really... Uh, do the job. Okay. All right, so what Good. do you think? What do you got? Okay, which is called night and, night and Day. See? So it's a double, well, it's kind of a double bed, okay? Because it's 48 inches uh, and it's by 78, so it's the size of uh, what used to be the regular bed uh, years ago. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so you can also, you can put fitted sheets. I mean, fitted sheets where it might be too big, but it, it doesn't really matter. But the good thing is that you can interchange the backs with the tables, you can move all the pieces around, you can make it into a sofa, you can make it into a tete-a-tete, -tete, uh -huh. so sit face to face. Like you've got right over here. Yeah, like this here. Uh -huh. uh, you can remove uh, all the pieces, then it's a bed. You can also angle the backs to, to look at the TV. See? Oh, perfect. So, and it's easy. I mean, it's like it's done in the wink of an eye. I mean, it's very, very easy to maneuver. So what's it. the material? What is this? Is it uh, leather fabric? Uh, this one is microfiber. Then you have a nice woven fabric here in a, in a grayish uh, tones. Okay. Uh, kind of like a tweed kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, it's kind of a tweed. I like that because we're using some bluish cut tones in here, gray, that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, so to it's, break gonna, out. it's gonna blend, uh, per, it should blend okay. perfectly. All right, so how big is it? Let me check our space. Uh, it, this one is 78 by 48. Okay. So if we go 78. Uh, that would be like right about yes. here. Okay, so okay. you know, 78, when we, we consider that a normal sofa would uh -huh. be 84 inches most of the time. Okay. So 78 is a bit shorter. That's good, on we the need other the end, short space. On so. the other end, it's deeper by about 12 inches. Normal so okay, far so would be 36. How big, how big is this, one? this one is 48. Okay, so yeah. about right to the yeah. inside of my foot here. Yes. So right. it leaves you 4 or 5 feet. For walking. Yes. Uh -huh. and, and also it makes it really makes the room multi-purpose uh -huh. in a way that uh, you know what and in many cases a lot of people they have 
their kids, they, they left for university or right. they, they married or whatever. Uh, sometimes they come back from university. Sometimes they come back from... For other reason. The space. So the yeah. great, the, yeah. So the great thing with a, uh, a sofa like this here is that they, it could be used as a bed, it could be used as a sofa, mm -hmm. and they don't... But if this uh, was an office, it'd be a nice reception area oh, here Oh, absolutely, as well. okay, absolutely. I want a side chair. So what do yes. you have in mind for a side chair? A uh, side chair, I, I'd go with something that... I don't want anything big and bulky, yes. something maybe that can be moved around. Okay, uh, yeah, a, a, a chair that would be easy to move around. I was thinking about uh, the ghost. Uh, where is the ghost? Yeah, the, the ghost. ghost. Yeah, it, it's called ghost because it looks looks like a structure, and then uh -huh. it looks like a spooky is under it. <laughs> See? Oh, uh, I love it. What's the yeah. cover made out of? Uh, the cover is leather. Oh, See? That's so it's great. a slip cover actually, uh, that goes over a wood frame. But the good thing is that it doesn't make a set. You see, yeah. it's like more eclectic, I like and, that. It, and it matches the sofa. Uh, so very easily. Could I do yeah. like in white? Would that oh, yeah. match with it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, to match well with the with, with the, the other piece. The other piece. And and like I say, I mean, since the room is multi-purpose, you don't want to have a room that would be like all the rooms. Like you have the sofa and then the matching chairs yeah, and the matching no. table. You no. want something that's more live, yeah. lively. That's and you know, more and, fun. and I want to be able to like that. That's got to be a lightweight chair, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so you so can, can bring it, it in the room, yes. All right, so if I wanted yeah. to, you know, if I wanted to pick it up and put it maybe in a bedroom or in an oh, office absolutely. for another I, meeting or yes. something, it would work. It's, yeah, it's lightweight, but also, I mean, if you put felt with your uh, with the wood floor, you can easily Just move, drag it, it right move, move it around. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, this is the perfect time to plan out the furniture so we know that we have our electric boxes in yes. place where they're supposed to be. So I, I have, uh, yes, the electric boxes, on one on each side for the lamps. Uh -huh. Because in this case here, you see, yep. uh, I've put the uh, Ptolemyo lamp from Artemide that's attached to the, uh, I mean, for that, for that picture. See, I love that. That's you can sit there and the work table. on your laptop and all. Yeah. This is going to work out great. You know, it can make a work uh, workspace, uh -huh. but since it's a, so it's a sofa as well, you have the, the impression that you don't work. Which is good sometimes. I like that yes. impression. Now if yes. I could just make that yes. happen a reality yes. that I don't work, I'd be all set. Well, yeah. Okay, so now that we're doing it ahead of time and we're in the construction area, yes. mm -hmm. how long will it take us to get it? Uh, well, if it's in stock, it's very, <laughs> very fast. See, in other okay. words, I no but too soon, right? Yes. You'll order it now for no. me, and yes. then we'll have it. Yes, yes. Okay, well, thank you, darling. So you need to think about... You, you, you know what? Sometimes people do everything, uh -huh. and at the end they say, oh, now we need furniture. Exactly. Then they get into a store, they see a black sofa that they like, but they want it white. Uh -huh. Well, sorry, ma'am, we don't eight, have 12, it in stock. Weeks, so yeah. 8, 12 weeks, 8, 8 to 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. So you better plan before and uh -huh. make sure that uh, everything's going to fall into place. Otherwise, you're sitting on the floor in a beautiful room. Waiting, Wait, for, the waiting furniture. for the furniture to arrive. Well, I'm glad that you came when you did, because <laughs> yes. that's about My our pleasure. timetable. Yes. In about eight weeks, we should be completely yep. done. Right? Absolutely. Thank you, darling. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And Norman was right about ordering the furniture when we did. The space is done now, and we can sit here and watch television this evening. But I know you want to see some other spaces, so come on. This is my new design space. I absolutely love the way that it turned out. You know, I've got all my storyboards up here on the wall, and as I collect and see things that I like, I clip them out of magazines, put them up, and I use that for inspirations for projects I'm going to share with you here on For Your Home. Now, most of the things in this space are contemporary, and you might be thinking it all needs to be chrome and glass and black to do that. Well, this drafting table, it looks like a vintage, table, but it's actually a brand new one. I love mixing vintage looking pieces in a contemporary setting. And the industrial look is really hot, hot today. Now, back here in the corner, you've got to also, you know, think about function. I've got a great little table here with lots of drawers so I can keep all of my art supplies really handy. On the wall, the lights that I chose for this area, they are very contemporary looking. With the glass orbs, I really think that they're beautiful. Plus, they provide great lighting. Now, this is the bedroom in our garage apartment. It's very small, but yet the way we have decorated it makes it quite spacious. On this area, we have created a dresser space. We have tons of storage so that you can 
you know, you can tuck away extra towels for the bathroom, your books, a mirror, a nice surface to work off of. This side of the room, nice deep drawers. These can hold a lot of extra clothes, or you can also use them as a file cabinet if you wanted to do that as well. We've got beautiful crystal sconces that really sparkle and light up the space. For a bed, I chose a day bed. What I like about day beds is they don't look messy. They look tailored. So we've selected a nice print, a lot of great comfortable pillows, and a comfy throw. I've also added to the floor in here a simple rug that ties together the colors. In the far corner of our room, I added a seating area. Simple black leather chair, a reading light, it makes it a great spot. But when you're planning out an apartment, remember you need a living space, a bathroom, a kitchen, a home office, a bedroom. Whatever it is that your goals are, think about the entire project. I am still absolutely amazed that we were able to take a space that looked like this and turn it into a space that looks like this. Do you want to know more about the projects today or our guests? Visit us on the web. You're going to find great behind the scenes shots, streaming video, project ideas. We even have an e-newsletter with tips and ideas. It's foryourhome.com. You can see why this project has become an FYH classic. I hope you found some great ideas for ways that you can tap into some unused space around your home. Join me next time right here on For Your Home.